Hey guys, welcome to part two of our Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure day. You guys will be seeing uh, the second half of our day, which will include our dinner and our nighttime trip to Islands of Adventure, where we pretty much close the park down, which we've never really done with the boys before. So we got to see a lot of stuff for the very first time. So without further ado, here's the rest of our first day at Universal Studios. This is George. He is a good little monkey and always very curious. And as you go through Curious George Goes to Town, you can read excerpts from his visit to town and all of the trouble that George gets into while he's in town. There are some shady areas here, so great place to escape the sun. Like I said, there are some soak areas, soak zones. So if you wanted to cool off, you could come over here and get absolutely soaked if you wanted to. Or we're in the way of some of the blaster cannons. They could squirt you. But like I said, we're making our way to the back into the ball pit area. I will park my stroller outside here. Won't be taking that in. And we are in the ball pit. We haven't been in here but five seconds and Ty is already taking off. He's upstairs. Chad, of course, down there. You can see him throwing balls up, probably to Ty. But they have played in here for hours and hours before. So great place for parents to come in and chill. Just let your little ones go crazy. Spending energy. While the boys are in here and playing, I thought I'd talk for a second about our cups because we've got these filled up a couple times today, but I don't think uh, we told you about them. So um, the two of the four cups we have that have the UOAP and the yellow lid on them, um, they are specific annual pass holder cups but anybody has the ability to get these freestyle cups uh, that you can bring back and use, you know, unlimited times. It's not a year to year basis. You know, we could keep these cups for years and continue to use them. Um, once you buy them, you just come in and activate them if you want to use them that day. And the activation I want to say is like $9.99 per cup. So we pay around $40 a day for our four cups, but you know we more than make up for that use because we keep them filled all day. They work at freestyle machines, they work at you know just regular soda fountain machines that aren't freestyle, and then you can also put ices in them, and and we take advantage of that as well. Um, and plus, we have our annual pass holder discount, which does you know, take off a little bit of the cost of this. In addition to that. We also have a popcorn bucket, and we have several of these. We forgot ours at home, so we bought a new one uh, today, but you can get popcorn refills in this, and I wanna say it may be 99 cents or $1.99 um, for a popcorn refill, and again, we can use our annual pass holder discount and make it even less than that, so these are an absolute great deal. Um, they actually have, I think, one, maybe two, stands um, in the park that you can actually get caramel corn, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, the only place that I know of that does it, and maybe somebody can tell me if there's another one, but there's a location on the way out of Islands of Adventure that has caramel corn, and you can fill it up with that as well. Boys are over here vacuuming up balls to go in their bag which I think they'll then take upstairs to shoot out of those cannons. But they are busy little worker bees while they are in here, that is for sure. That's what you do after you get all hot and sweaty in the ball pit. You come out here to the splash area Yeah. 
You can go down. From one play area to another, the boys are now over here in Fifel's Playland. They have made their way, or are making their way, I should say, up to the top of the structure, because now that Ty's soaked, he's perfectly fine with riding the water slide. You know, he's not a huge fan of being wet, but since he is already wet, there's no issue. They are doing a little enhancement on some of the structure, but they've got to get all the way up there and this is a fast little water slide and the heavier you are the wetter you get so we'll be watching and monitoring the tv so we can see when they get up there and then i'll try to film them as they come down the slide all right so the boys just took off so we'll be able to see them come down here any second Headed into SpongeBob store pants. Excuse us. Squidward's house. You can't go into Squidward's house. And then you have SpongeBob's house with Gary in there. The boys love to come and party out in SpongeBob's house. They dance. Ty rides Gary. It's a must. Could y'all see me in this shirt? Because I could see me in this shirt. Yes, I could see you. Sixty-five dollars for this SpongeBob Hawaiian shirt. There's Mondays. Monday's got me like, yes, that is the truth. Stop and absorb, absorb the moment. Dad, these are slippers. Sl SpongeBob slippers? SpongeBob doing the imagination. That is $20. We've made our way to the New York Times Square area for the largest Mardi Gras booth. Cause it's the first one we came to because we are here to get ty's favorite thing from mardi gras ty what are we getting what are we getting beignets, beignets. and then chad is getting marshmallow pie they've got like a mardi gras marshmallow pie like a mardi gras moon pie so chad will have that and ty's gonna have his beignets so we've got our food ty's mardi gras marshmallow pie it's yummy and it's already melting and then Ty has a bag full of beignets. This is why I don't get chocolate. It might melt. This is why I don't get chocolate. This is what you look like after you have a whole bag of beignets to yourself. <laughs> and I got the fat one. I got the fat one. The fat one going the last one. And then you got chocolate face over here. Yeah. We are in line for Transformers now. I apologize, I forgot to take a video of the outside of the building with Optimus Prime standing atop the building. But we'll be in the queue for a little while. This is our ride vehicle on Transformers. It is Autobot Evac. He will be transporting us through the mission to save the world and get the all spark. How are we doing, guys? We ready? So you can see four per row, no lap bar. Or the, excuse me, there is a lap bar. All right, everybody. This is a 3D ride. Okay, I know it's a little backwards, but here's the entrance to the Transformers ride. This used to be Ty's favorite ride. I know it still ranks high up there for him. Um, and we had a very smooth ride that time. Sometimes it can be really rough, but we were on the first row. And so I think that may have had something to do with it. We have some Mardi Gras performers. 
out here. One of the boys' favorite things to do with Mardi Gras yeah. is to collect beads. So we'll see if they get them. Hey, go get you some beads. Here's some more Mardi Gras food stands spread out throughout the park. This is a basically a twisted tater with a hot dog in it. What's my eye got? The twisted taters are incredible. So they've tried to find a way to have them out here for just about every major thing. It used to be just the HHN thing. But the last two years they've been here at Mardi Gras and we will definitely be getting one of those because we love them. And then here's another dessert stand where we could come and get some more beignets or exactly what they served at they the other one. They have a king cake. All right, we are out here in front of Rip Ride Rocket. Mom doesn't ride this one. So Chad and I are gonna go ride it. I cannot film in the queue because they make you go through a metal detector on your way into the queue so I will not have my phone with me. So hopefully Jess will be able to get some footage for you guys while Chad and I are on it. Thanks to Jess for getting some ride footage for us. Uh, Chad listened to... Um, you already know. Born to be wild. It's perfect with he, that. Yeah, he, he listens to Born to be Wild every time. You get to pick your music. I've got two go-to songs and for that ride I listened to Rollin' by Limp Biscuit. Not a huge Limp Biscuit fan, but that particular song actually syncs perfectly with the coaster. I've got one more, and I may let you in on that later this week, because I'm sure I'll listen to it again. But for now, why not? Why don't you take a guess and see what uh, you think I listen to in the comments down below. Um, I'll give you a hint, it's in the pop category. We're currently waiting here at the frozen drink stand by the Monsters Cafe because this is the only location in this park that you can get a pina colada icy and that's what the boys really love so we'll see how that goes so there's only one other place in Islands of Adventure you can get it too but another little park hack for you guys Hashtag the panda out here been having a dance off with this Mardi Gras performer. Hashtag's awesome. Always interacting. Great, great, great. Mardi Gras performers have been fantastic too. Oh, the boys want a picture with hashtag, so let's get this interaction on video. They love hashtag. Hashtag's fantastic. Now in the queue for Jimmy Fallon, there's the roots. NBC logo, we are making our way. There's Jimmy. Here we go. Ty has and collected. A 
Ty, Ty is a bead collector. He does not mind. Does not mind at all dancing his hiney off for the Mardi Gras folks. Jess said he danced and danced and danced and danced and danced in front of the king and queen. Maybe she got that on video. If she did, I will have already linked it in here for you guys to see. Because that's what they were doing while I was in line filling up pina colada ices for the children. Oh my gosh, the ragtime guys are out. And hashtag, we hit the jackpot. These guys are fantastic. And there goes hashtag dancing away. it a million and one times but when I retire I want to come down to Universal and I want a job I want a job here giving back to the people I'd love to be a part of the ragtime guys there's hashtag just let me be a cast member please That's what I want to do hashtag is a hot mess look at him dancing Woo! oh and a ragtime guy He is, he's winded. He's done. No moss. No moss for hashtag. He's, hashtag is tapping out. Still in the queue. Making our way. Making our way downtown. Got some Fallon clips here. Got some more 3D glasses. Ready, ready, ready. Fallon was fun. We did have to, have to wait out like a five minute technical delay but it wasn't much and we were at least in the part of the queue where we can watch some of the funny Fallon clips so it made the time go by fast we are going to head over and show you guys the Mardi Gras tribute store now for those of you that are unfamiliar the tribute store is open to anyone so you don't have to be an annual pass holder or anything like that absolutely anybody is able to go in the tribute store and they usually have three different rooms where they sell merchandise and also food. So here is the facade of the tribute store. It is made to look like a float factory. So I have a feeling we're gonna be seeing some designs inside of the parade floats that are being used. Tribute store float factory concepts and ideas maybe for floats that are used or were thought about but all throughout you're going to see the various merchandise that's being sold for Mardi Gras 
Ooh, look at this, the Phantom of the Opera. Promotional poster for it. They did back in 1925. Some concept art. You got a King Gaeta head there. Lots of different Mardi Gras merchandise. You can make your own wax gator figurine. It makes it right in front of you. Various headgear. And on display, you've got different masks and headgear. Of course, beads. If you want more intricate beads than what they will pass out for free, you can get a Mardi Gras spirit jersey. Some tiara type headwear and earrings. We've got more concept art over here. And you have crazy children. There's the mummy, Boris Karloff. There's King Gator, concept art for his head. Some more headgear here. Here's a wax river boat. You get made again, it presses it, creates it right in front of you, only six dollars. Masks, various different types. I'll give you guys some pricing on these. Okay, so this mask right here is twenty-five dollars. Let's see if the this one's actually twenty. Sure, these skull masks and these up here are a little bit more expensive. Yeah, these are forty-five dollars. Get you a Mardi Gras colored dress. Some male attire over here. More Mardi Gras shirts. Mardi Gras glassware. Cannot recommend this company enough. This is the Magic Candle Company. I believe it's based here in Florida, but they always put out special scents for the different. Um, seasonal events here at Universal, and they all smell on point and accurate. And these are two of the flavors or scents. There's another voodoo one over here and a, a Fleur de Lis scented candle. Um, I've gotten a couple of air fresheners. You can go online and buy them, the magiccandlecompany.com, or you can also find them on Instagram at Magic Candle Company. And uh, I've gotten some air fresheners for our car. Uh, I've gotten one that smells like the Pandora ride at Animal Kingdom in Disney. And the scent is the exact same. And then currently in my car, I have uh, uh, what they call the extraterrestrial forest. In other words, that ET forest smell I was talking about earlier today. Got little skirts. Jess, I think, needs that dress. That's. How much of an evil eye would she give me if I told her that she needed that dress? And then back here in the back, I did not forget about it, but you have the HHM Bear. Longtime mainstay, HHM Bear is partying for Mardi Gras. You can come have your picture made in the king's chair right next to the HHM Bear back here. And here's some skull designs. Don't say Mardi Gras on them or Universal. Still, all the worthwhile. Hey, did y'all get your uh, picture made in the king's chair in the yeah. back? No? So a look back at previous Mardi Gras. Come uh, on. Ty, Ty, it's all the way in the back of this one. Ty decided he wanted to have his picture made in the king's chair. Cool. You should put a mask on and do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. Earl the Squirrel, giving safety tips. Earl is um, kind of a Christmas icon here. Please do not rhyme it. Earl's acronym up there stands for Earl's Advanced Rules, leading to safety. 
We love Earl the Squirrel. Look, there's King Ty. Sit up. Sit up in the king's chair. Yeah. Don't just slouch. Hey. Les on Bonton Roulet. There you go. Yeah. yeah. King Beads. Right there. Mama's taking this picture. Chad and I will go ahead and go on. Look, you can see they're building some float here. We'll go down this hallway as it has pictures of Mardi Gras past here at Universal. There's something creepy. Just a guy in a dog mask and a devil. Welcome to Mardi Gras. They went down the road. Yes, this is where the original floats, they brought them down I-4. You can imagine, for those of y'all that are familiar with the traffic on I-4, driving the floats down here once they were created. That's a whole mood right there. Okay, we're going into the painting room. So you've got all different types of paint for the floats. Obviously, these are just decorations. Queen shirt. And a king shirt. King gator's head. Again, a lot of what you see in here, you've already seen in the tribute store. <laughs> Ty says Chad needs that. I just want to get that on film. That's a good brother right there. All different types. We almost, Justice is, I thought it was almost Harley Quinn, but there's orange in it. Planet Mardi Gras shirt. I actually like that. Planet Mardi Gras poster. And now, louder, wilder, spicier. If it wasn't a white shirt, I might get it. And we've made our way into the food section. They got roasted nuts. Might have to do that. We got a Mardi Gras brownie, macaron, cupcake, trifles, Mardi Gras apples. So many choices. King cakes. And oh, there's the King Gator float that we saw all the designs for. And the theme is basically planets so king gator in space it's like a crop top louder wilder spicier we got assorted coffee on sale in here by the coffee shop of horrors and just different designs all that we've seen throughout here and that is pretty much it from the, uh, what is it? Oh, you got little voodoo doll over here by the checkout. And that'll do it for our showing you around the tribute store. All right, I got a chocolate covered piece of bacon from the tribute store. And the boys got a cupcake as well as one of the king cake moon pies to eat after dinner, but we're gonna eat this chocolate covered piece of bacon uh, right now. We'll let you guys know what we think. It's definitely interesting. Mm. <laughs> you would. Sweet and savory. Ty, do you want to try the chocolate covered bacon? No, don't lick it, bite it. Don't take a huge bite if you don't like, take a little bit. Not for Ty, here's Ty's drink. So Ty does not like the chocolate covered bacon. It's okay, I'm not a big fan. Chad doesn't like it either, so I guess I will be finishing off the chocolate covered bacon. It's, it's interesting. Okay, as we are getting ready to leave Universal Studios, we've got the Minions ride that we did not ride today. And then over on this other side used to be Shrek 4D. The Shrek 4D is closed permanently. And now you see the Minions construction walls up over there. 
but we do not know yet what is going to be going in there. They have not announced yet what's going in there. And we are not done with our park adventures yet, but we are headed out to City Walk for dinner. We've got reservations at our favorite restaurant in City Walk, which is the Cowfish. And we'll show you guys that when we get over there. And then we'll head back over where we started our day in Islands of Adventure to do a little bit more stuff over there to end our night. I would be an awful host to you guys if I didn't show y'all the Universal Wall out here in front. Been refurbished a lot throughout the years, but still number one photo spot opportunity here at the parks. All right, so we're in City Walk. You've got the NBC Sports Grill Bar. And then hiding behind the NBC Sports Grill is Voodoo Donuts, which is popular 24 hours a day when it's open. It is always crowded. Breakfast, middle of the day, end of the night, especially for folks wanting to get donuts to eat for the next morning. They always crowded at Voodoo Donuts. Wide variety, a little overpriced, but they are good. I think the boys do enjoy the big pink donut in the Universal Park that you can get from the Simpsons area or the Dr. Seuss area, just a little more. But there's Voodoo Donut. Up there are just some more quick eats. You can see Panda Express, Moe's, Burger King, Minchie's. There's a bread box up there, as well as a tattoo parlor. Here you have the brand new Universal Store, which takes up about three to four different buildings now. It used to be located on the other side of City Walk, um, and they actually still own the other store. They have just turned it into a legacy store, so it's more of a Universal vault collection over there. And then you have tons of kiosks out here in the middle, selling, selling a variety of different things. Some Universal related, some not. And then we are headed right here, right in front of us, the Cowfish, which is sushi, it's burgers, um, it's a bar, it's a lot of fusion, but extremely good. Jess and I were so unsure of it the first time we tried it. We absolutely loved it, and it is so hard to get a reservation. So this is only gonna be, I think, our third or fourth time eating at the Cowfish. But we were so happy to get a reservation. All right, so we are up here on the deck at Cowfish. It is a two-story restaurant. The bottom floor is just pretty much the host stand. And so the whole restaurant is on the second floor. There is indoor and outdoor seating. And there is an upper level from this as well. To start with, we got some fried pickles. Chad absolutely loves fried pickles. We've never had these here before, so hopefully they're good. And then when our entrees come out, we'll show them to y'all. All right, so our entrees have gotten here. Chad got a tempura shrimp roll. He, want, he wanted some shrimp, so he's gonna give that a try. And he got edamame and apples as his side. And then it comes with a Rice Krispie Treat dessert that has like a fruit roll up and a um, Swedish fish on it. Ty got mac and cheese with oranges and apple slices. And then you can see the fruit roll up still holding his Swedish fish to his Rice Krispie. Jess got the all-American cheese burgushi. Okay, so it, it's basically a cheeseburger that has been shaped into look like a sushi roll. And I got what they called the high-class hillbilly, which is basically a barbecue sushi type dish. And I've had this before, and it is extremely good. I wanted to show you guys the QR code to give you the opportunity that if you wanted to scan it while watching the video to see the wide variety of stuff that you can get here at the Cowfish, you would have the opportunity to do so. You couldn't really see what all was in mine because of all the onion straws on top of it. So I wanted to show you guys that you can see it's barbecue beef. It's 
kind of like wrapped in the barbecue onion straws and there's also coleslaw within there making this up. So Ty's mac and cheese has been delicious. He's loved it, eaten a lot of it. Jess has gotten to a point where she can't eat any more of her cheese burgushi. My uh, high class hillbilly is gone. You just have some remnants of the coleslaw and the like the potato straws left. Chad did not really care for the tempura shrimp. Like yeah, he, he gave it a shot though. He he downed all of his edamame though. Absolutely loves it. And then he's also still been eating the fried pickles. The adventure begins again. Dinner is over and we've made our way back to where we started this morning at Islands of Adventure. So hoping to do a little more than what we got accomplished this morning. Wait times are down. And as you can tell, the sun is also starting to go down as well. Last we heard, Hagrid's was delayed. So I don't know if we'll be heading there first. Chad would still like to do Velocicoaster, which of course Ty can't do. So Ty might go ride the Pteranodon Flyers with mom while Chad and I do Velocicoaster. I didn't show you guys much of the Lost Continent earlier this morning due to the crowd, but right over here on my left, this is the Mythos restaurant. And Mythos has been rated as the best theme park restaurant in the world year after year after year. It's constantly at the top. It is very good. Then on my right, is Poseidon's Fury, which is a walkthrough show attraction that has been down for about the last year, maybe a little more. There was some thought that it was going away completely, but that turns out to be false, and they are just refurbishing it, and it really needs it. It's pretty dated, but it is one of my favorite attractions, so very glad that it's not gone for good. All right, we are in the queue for Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. It's back up and running, it was delayed. They said a 40 minute wait, so we'll keep an eye on that. It is 6.21 as we are getting in line. So we'll find out. But you can see a lot of the outdoor portion of the ride right here, but it doesn't spoil or give yeah, away this anything. Rider. Yeah, that's single rider, Ty single rider line right beside us. What, what height you have to be to do single rider? That is a good question, Ty. I'm not sure what height you have to be to do single rider. My guess would be 54 inches. Yep. Or 50. Or maybe 51. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Well, I was parking the stroller ac uh, across the street from the attraction. You can't bring it in. You can't park it right beside it. You have to park next to the uh, three broomsticks. I saw McLaren and her mother chilling, having some butter beer. And you know, it's not often you can run into some folks you know from back home when you're down here. But they reminded me of course that our band is coming down here to play at Magic Kingdom tomorrow. So they were here just for today and then they will be heading over to Magic Kingdom to watch the band tomorrow with a lot of other folks. So maybe see some other East Paulding people here on Friday since they'll all be over at the Magic Kingdom tomorrow. Dad, I wanna make a prediction. We are not going to walk straight on here. Yeah, no you're way. right, Ty, we're not walking no straight on this. But we have, have not stopped in a while, right now. Here's Hagrid's hut. Let me show you guys. Usually the queue will run all the way through there, so the fact that we are already heading this way towards the building is a great sign. Because again, there is no express pass for Hagrid. So we will have to wait in the regular line, that is single rider on the right there. And they have started the pre-show stuff again, so I'm sure part of this line is just getting into the pre-show room and then we'll wind our way through the rest of the queue after the pre-show. All right, so 
maybe because of the fact that it was down for so long and the line's been so long today, they aren't currently doing the free show that normally goes on in this room that involves Hagrid and Arthur Weasley and Fang. And you can see Fang still walking around on the screen up there. And that's the only part of the pre-show that will go on during the times where the doors are just open and you continue on through the queue. So I haven't really filmed in the queue simply because it is really loud once you're inside the building. But I did want to show you guys what the ride vehicle looks like because since there is a moving platform when we get on, I'm not going to be able to film that close to the ride. So I want you to see the motorbike and the sidecar. Okay, the way that we're going to ride, I'm with Chad. Chad's going to be in the motorbike. I'll be in the sidecar. And then Mom and Ty will be riding right behind us. All right, so in total, we were in line for about 30 minutes on Hagrid. Uh, we would have been in line longer, probably closer to 45, but at the first height check stand, they were really unsure about Ty because of how close he is. So they actually sent us right up to the height check stand at the start of the ride to check it, and he was good to go. So we got to hop right on, and he and Mom sat in the front row, and Chad and I sat behind them. So when we knew we were gonna get the first row, Chad and I switched, because Chad's ridden in the front before, Ty never has. So Ty sat in the motorbike, Mom sat in the sidecar, Chad was in the motorbike, I was in the sidecar, and now we have split up, and Chad and I are headed to ride Velocicoaster. This will probably be our last ride of the night based on its wait time. as well as uh, when the park closes. And Ty and Mom, since Ty is not tall enough for this, they got right back in line for Hagrid again. Ty really wanted to ride it one more time. And so, uh, because of its wait time and park closes, that'll be the last thing they do. So we will meet up and probably fill our cups up on the way back to the room after we get done with these rides. Now, Velocicoaster, I'll film some of the queue for you. Um, but I won't be able to show you guys the ride vehicle up close because just like Hulk and Rip Ride, we do have to pass through metal detectors. And so I will have to put all of my stuff in a locker when we get closer to riding on the vehicle. You can see the nice sign changing colors down here by the Discovery Center entrance. So it will look like we are in a raptor paddock as we're going throughout this queue. Hope to give you guys a shot of the coaster coming over the most. There it is, the Mosasaurus roll here is what they call it, which is over the water, the lake here in the middle of the island. All right, we finally made it inside the main building for Jurassic World. Had been winding around outside to get the video. We've seen the lighthouse out front actually shining and spinning around and flashing on stuff. We've seen beacons up in the air. It's been really, really, really cool to experience and see for the first time. Blue, Echo, Delta, and Charlie are the four raptors. And then this is actually mimicking one of the paddocks that is up on the ride. You'll see the Velociraptors so up here. You probably just heard one. And I'm sure they'll be here at some point, maybe while we're still standing. Our 
line is still moving. We are off Velocicoaster. It only took about an hour and a half. No, uh, Chad's exaggerating. It wasn't that bad. It may have been right on the 60 minute mark or so, um, but it wasn't a bad wait. It definitely didn't feel that long. Um, we're on our way to meet up with Jess and Ty, uh, who we think are still on Hagrid. I haven't heard from her yet, but Velocicoaster, uh, this isn't a first time we've ridden it, but it definitely lives up to its billing. It is an intense ride. It is fast, it is thrilling, okay? It'll take your breath away. It doesn't give you that blackout, brownout feel, um, or at least not to me, and I typically get it on roller coasters that have a lot of G-forces, um, but it's really, really good. It does not beat you around or beat you up or anything like that, but it is really intense. So you have to know that going in. And the adventure lives on as we make our way out of Islands of Adventure tonight. We did not close it down completely. There is about an hour left of park time, but this is the latest that we've stayed. We still need to get all checked into our room and get our stuff in there and get rested so we can have a full day at Volcano Bay tomorrow when it is supposed to be real hot. I also wanted to show you guys this as we make our way out of the park. This is the popcorn cart that I mentioned earlier when I showed off the popcorn bucket where you can get caramel corn when it's open. Only advertised place in either park that I know of that you can get caramel corn. And we are gonna take the garden walk back to the hotel tonight. Again, because of what time it is, there will be a long wait for the boats for folks that don't feel like walking. So since it is a short walk and nobody's really complaining that their legs are tired, we're gonna, we're gonna walk back. Here's a shot of the lighthouse at time, Fort of Entry. And you can see it shining brightly pretty awesome and then you've got some beacons over there to the left you can make out as well just a beautiful beautiful shot as we're making our way back on the garden walk to the hotel I want to show you guys our hotel room you will be able to tell it is just a standard room it is not a suite that we had at uh, Cabana Bay, you've got one closet with a safe, okay, it's got an ironing board, just like Cabana Bay did. This closet is actually a little bigger of a closet space than what we had in the suite. The bathroom is a little smaller, full-size mirror right here, a couple mirrors to work with at the vanity, um, just one sink. And then you've got a walk-in shower, no tub in this one, so just a shower. And then a commode, of course, and fitting with the theming of the Pacific Isles. Okay, everything in here uh, really does fit that. Got a TV, got storage space. Should have, yep, there's a fridge. And some coffee and some cups down there. No microwave here. Got a lamp. Two queen size beds. Really love that artwork there. Okay, the tiki. From Volcano Bay. Some lamps. Got a digital clock and phone. Some more storage with some plugs. And yay, a USB plug. Did not have any USB plugs at Cabana Bay. Got a seat, another full-size mirror. And my desk. A beautiful shot of the Pacific there. Have a desk and a work my chair. Desk. And then an additional, from Volcano Bay. then an additional chair 
with a lamp over here by the window and a little stool. So not a, not a big room compared to our suite, but this will be home for the next three days. Okay. And it will be nice. Really, really, really busy, but fantastic day today. We are all exhausted and ready to call it a night so that we can hopefully get a good night's sleep and be ready to go at Volcano Bay tomorrow, which is Universal's water park. So tomorrow's video will be completely different for you guys. But thanks for coming along again. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic day. And we'll see you tomorrow. What's your why?